Hi, I'm Havana. I'm a UX designer and today we're going to do a redesign. So when new bootcamp grads and new designers ask me to look at their portfolio, as I'm assessing the portfolio, the number one question I am going through in my head is if I was looking at this portfolio, would I call this person in for an interview or not? And I would say 80% of the no's are due to just amateur visual design. Now, visual design is not the most important thing in UX, but that doesn't mean visual design is unimportant. My advice to uh, aspiring UX people is to at least learn the basics of design principles. Design principles such as balance, contrast, topography basics, color theory, hierarchy. All of these elements are going to uh, refine your design decisions. And what I want to drill into people is you need to be intentional with these design decisions. So how to take amateur design to decent design. So this is going to be the first in a series of me taking amateur designs and redesigning it, but also going through and narrating my exact thought process. Now, Three caveats, okay? Number one, I am focused on visual design only. I'm not necessarily looking at usability. I'm not looking at users. Now, sometimes, of course, usability and visual design are very married, but just know I'm gonna be talking about visual design here. Number two, I'm giving myself basically an hour and 30 minutes. In a real world scenario, of course, I would be much more meticulous and uh, practice better design file hygiene. Some of the things are gonna be a little sloppy with how I put it together, but I had an hour and 30 minutes. And then number three, this is not a Figma tutorial, okay? In a real world scenario, I would have more time. I would be dealing with auto layout components, making sure those components are designed correctly so that I can reuse them. Again, I have hour and 30 minutes to redesign a screen and kind of talk about the visual design decisions and design principles leading those decisions. Watching this, some of you designers might like cringe because I definitely did, but uh, the whole purpose of this is to kind of focus on taking amateur design uh, to making it decent design. Enjoy! All right, so I've got Figma open and here I am going to be redesigning this um, artist practice app that um, a designer has brought forward to me. This designer is currently going through a design boot camp. They have asked me to keep them anonymous. So for the purposes of this uh, redesign video, I'm just going to refer to them as Aubrey. All right, so what is the app? This is an app to help artists practice their craft. So the main problem is that artists um, report not having enough time to practice. This is based on Aubrey's um, initial user research. And what you're seeing here are three screens from the app. I want to start with a little bit of verbal critique here. The main thing that I've noticed in a lot of amateur designers is just a lack of intention around spacing. So off the top of my head, some of the things that kind of, uh, you know, um, jump out at me is um, we have really tight spacing here between this line and the title. Um, and then also the spacing between um, you know, this subtitle and these thumbnails, it just seems kind of like ugh, very uniform spacing. And it, uh, when you have uniform spacing like that, sometimes it can kind of look boring. Uh, it, down here, I also noticed that a lot of um, amateur designers just blow up their icons when it comes to the bottom navigation. I'm not sure why. Also, there's a lot of different um, typographic treatments here. So we've got, uh, we've got one font here and then we've got, uh, looks like Roboto. Let me see here. So if I click on this, yep, Roboto. Um, so Roboto is used for all of these. Um, but, oh, what is this? Is this Roboto as well? Yeah, it's Roboto. And then we also have another typeface here, which is share. So um, 
so first of all, I'm glad that they stuck to only two typefaces. That's pretty good. Uh, but the sizes are all over the place. We've got a 36 point. We've got 24. We've got 24 again. We've got 18, so we're at three stylings now. And then finally, we've got 15 here. Um, and then in here, you even see more uh, variations. Uh, this little subtitle here is at 14. So this is something I've learned from both um, Kayla Von Summer and Matt D. Smith. You don't want to go nuts with uh, varying up the sizes of your um, typefaces. Um, type size and type um, typefaces should kind of be restrained and uh, it just uh, makes for a much more consistent and clean and readable interface. So uh, spacing, uh, typographic um, typefaces and sizing, um, the sizing of the icons are just so huge. And when it's huge like this, it just makes um, it just makes it look really cl uh, cluttered and cramped in here. It just doesn't look as clean as it could be. And plus, the way these icons are designed, you know, so you see how it's a solid fill. There's very thick line weights here. Obviously, these icons were designed to be seen at really small sizes. So when it's blown up like that, it almost looks elementary um, and clunky, right? The other thing I would say is I understand why Aubrey chose this gradient, but it just makes the photo beneath just look really muddy. The other thing I would say is like these photos aren't the best. <laughs> so when we are creating interface, well, actually I do like this one. Um, I like the texture and the, uh, the close up here, but, um, I find that, you know, if you have the ability to choose really high quality photos and imagery, that's great. I have a bias towards illustration and gradient and solid fills. So we're going to play around with that later. Uh, and another thing I would say is the, um, the, the active state here and the navigation. Um, yes, it stands out with the orange, but we tend to want like some other visual indicator, right? So color plus another visual indicator. It could be a line up at the top. It could be, um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, there's different visual ways. We, we'll play around with that. What else? Um, and also because this is the end of the list here. So we've got one, two, three thumbnails. There's this weird, awkward, empty space here. I would have brought the navigation up a little just to close that space. Otherwise, if I was scrolling down here, I would expect, is there something else down here? Um, but that's, uh, that's my opinion. Uh, and then here we have a journal entry. You know, let's go ahead and focus on the first two and then we'll touch on this. Uh, the first thing I, uh, that jumps out to me immediately is I would not have this color as the background. Um, I think there's a cleaner way to do it. And again, the spacing seems very uniform here. So if I click on one of these and I hold down option 24, 24, Again, I'm clicking on the element. I'm holding down option 24. Like the, again, um, the spacing is just uniform, which is not terrible, but um, we can make this a little more visually interesting. Uh, anything else? Yeah, let's just jump right into it. So the first thing I would do um, before even starting this is I always like to collect inspiration. So, Aubrey mentioned to me that um, they wanted something educational, encouraging, approachable. Again, think about the users, the artists um, tend to be very self-conscious about their craft. Maybe they don't feel like um, they have enough time. Maybe they don't feel good enough, right? So when I look at inspiration, I'm looking for similar or parallel experiences. 
I'm not necessarily looking for other art practice applications. Um, I want to look at educational apps, motivational apps, goal tracker apps. And so here I have a couple of uh, examples. So Duolingo, you know, think about other educational things or things that require practice that, um, that do require you to consistently practice on a regular basis. Language learning is obviously one of them. So the first thing I thought of was Duolingo. So what can we, um, I mean, uh, well, you know what, let me get back to that. So I have some screenshots from Duolingo. Uh, I've got, uh, here's some more from Duolingo. These are probably different iterations of the app, but that's totally fine. I also picked Khan Academy. Uh, Khan Academy is another educational app that covers a lot of topics. They cover mathematics, literature, world history, um, etc. So they've got a lot of content there. And see how the, the navigation is a lot smaller? See how their icons are smaller? Uh, we'll get to that. And let's see here. Khan Academy again. Okay, that's really pixelated. <laughs> um, I also chose like um, kind of like exercise or meditation apps. So this is uh, one from Elevate. So this is all about building goal, like building um, a consistent practice around uh, a singular goal: relaxation, sleep, blah blah blah. You can select the area you want to improve upon and I love this little like tracker right uh, day three of ten so there's like an end goal and you can track your progress I love that you can also start the process so I like that pattern let's keep that in mind uh, let's see here what game was this uh, this might be Elevate, or this is one of those brain games. Um, I used to play Peak and Lumosity. Um, these are like brain puzzles and things that you can do every day. Um, I love uh, that they split up the categories between games and study. And I actually like the visual treatments that they gave to these thumbnails. Everything's a square, but each one has like a very distinct um, visual uh, profile, visual look. Um, I think that's fun. So their thumbnails, uh, instead of using uh, photos, uh, they're using like these more graphical, um, geometric uh, gradients. Like They're relying on other things other than literal photos. I also like that each one is characterized by uh, icon and label. That's cool. This is Elevate, again, uh, kind of a brain training thing. Uh, what I like about this is it's very simple. Um, it's very straightforward, very simple, and then you can also track your progress. So that's another thing to think about. Human beings are um, wired to respond to progress, wired to, um, you, you, we want to see some sort of progression. How can you, show that in a visual way, right? And I love this uh, little current streak, two days. It's just a, a little touch of encouragement without, you know, confetti splashing out from the bottom of the screen. Here is Lucid, I believe. Um, Lucid is another ed educational app. I like, again, this tab pattern is really cool. Um, different, and I like their, again, uh, we don't rely on photos, we rely on illustration, which I think looks cleaner, looks more modern. Uh, that's just me, of course. And again, look how small, much smaller these icons are uh, compared to Aubrey's original design. And then finally, I have a couple more. Um, this, again, I like the tracker. Um, having like a finite end goal and your progression through that goal, that's really cool. I also love the ability to adjust the goal here too. I don't know about you, but I definitely overestimate the amount of time and the amount of energy I have. So sometimes it is helpful to adjust the goal. That's totally um, optional, of course, but I think that's a nice little uh, touch. 
Um, again, with the streak, again, people, like if you can show the progression, people are more inclined to stick with it. Uh, and here, here's another visual way to treat these um, thumbnails or these categories, right? No photos, it's all illustration. Or <laughs> this isn't even illustration, it's just like colored blobs. But I don't know, I, I like that um, it's broken out into these categories and then uh, there's a subtitle underneath that kind of shows you like how many exercises there are um, under that category. And anyways, so what can we determine from these different patterns? So it seems like rounded corners are uh, definitely um, a pattern here. I also find that like the colors tend to be softer. You don't have a lot of like sharp black or grays. Um, I like that they're more colorful and I think that's what uh, contributes to the, the fun element of it, right? I also find that the softer colors are, um, maybe that's more um, appropriate for like a meditation app where it is supposed to be a little bit more calming uh, whereas like brighter colors are kind of like uh, more action oriented. So let's keep that in mind. And um, again, rounded corners, rounded corners. And it seems like illustrations are a big part of this. And I think, you know, I think illustrations are such a big part of these apps because we do want to be encouraging and approachable. And I feel like the illustrations just make it more friendly. Um, also, with photos, I feel like it's just so uh, 2010s. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. Um, I am definitely more, um, you know, I lean towards illustration a lot more. All right. So we kind of have some ideas. We've got, oh, we've uh, boiled down some ideas for like, uh, like, I mean, you can even see uh, typographic treatments here, right? They're like a lot more geometric, humanistic. They're um, a lot, um, there's like a friendly element to it, except this one. This one seems a little bit more serious with how narrow the, um, the type is, but we want our app to be friendly. So let's let our colors, our shape language, and our um, typographic treatment reflect that. Let's jump back to our screens and I'm going to go ahead and put these aside. Let's see. Let's do, is that the size here? Oh, they chose something a little more. Let's see how big the screen is. Okay, it's 375. This is 375. Why does it look different? Oh, I, never mind. <laughs> All right, so I've got a artboard um, for a width of 375 pixels here, and let's get started. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this thing up here, and also let me give you a quick tip. I definitely recommend that you name your uh, your layers. Okay. And now people say, I don't have time to name all my layers. Listen, you just need to name things once most of the time. And then when you copy and paste things, it carries over that name. So here, another shortcut that I highly recommend is Command R, or if you are a Windows machine, Control R. That's gonna help you rename your artboards, um, rename any selected layer, really. So we're gonna do practice screen, uh, Redesign A. So I will explain why I named it Redesign A in a little bit. But all right, so let's see. First, uh, let's figure out how much um, margin we want. So what is this? This is 20. So another thing about spacing is an eight point grid is or eight pixel grid is going to be the most common pattern that you want to use in terms of um, uh, spacing. So let's see here. 
Yeah, I think. All right, let's go ahead. Let's just play around and see what it looks like. So here, um, and this is another trick that I learned from both Matt D. Smith and Kayla uh, Van Sumer. We're going to just stick with one font uh, treatment for right now. I'm going to use SF Pro. Uh, that is the Apple native um, font. But uh, let's say um, 20. Okay. And do, do, do. Oh, no. All right. So practice. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to make this. 24 pixels in. Oh, another thing I do here is I've gone to preferences and I clicked on nudge amount. So a small nudge, so using your arrow keys, it's going to move by two pixels for me. Um, this is my attempt to try to uh, make it more efficient for me to stay within those um, eight pixel increments, a big nudge is going to be eight pixels. So you can play around with this, just see what works for you. All right, so practice. What do you want to practice? Okay, uh, all right, and then here, We've got these big boxes. Twenty-seven. What is this? This is twenty-four. Okay, so let me move twenty-four. All right, this is where I might get a little twenty-four. There we go. And then make sure it's 24 on this end. <laughs> Bam. Okay, so I got 24 on each side. And I do agree with Aubrey's decision here to round out. Let's try that and see if that works for us. All right, so here... Um, And make it 16 pixels away, okay? And then we're gonna work on this navigation. So, oh, so I just put command R. No, oh, wait, what did I do? Oh, okay. I clicked R, not command R, but just R, and that makes um, the the rectangle shape pop up. Um, these shortcuts are really helpful if you're working in Figma or any design tool just to kind of um, make your workflow a little faster. All right, so here, I'm gonna make this white. And uh, for right now, since I don't have the icons, I'm gonna just, you know what? Let's just reuse these icons, why not? I don't wanna hunt for new icons. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Oh my goodness. So here I'm going to shrink it down. Okay, that's too small. The other thing you want to think about is touch target. So um, I think on a phone, the uh, minimum touch target is like 40 or 45 pixels. And what touch target is, is like, wh how, well, how can you design it so that ergonomically most thumbs can actually click on it? By the way, remember that I am so not, uh, I am not 
doing my usual Figma thing where I'm like making components and using auto layout and stuff like that right now. It's just visual. So here. Okay. Learn. So my navigation probably needs to be a little bigger here. The other thing I like to do is I like to zoom out to take a look because, um, and I tend to try to zoom out to approximately what the screen size would be, um, just to see if like the things I'm doing are making sense in terms of um, sizing, like is this too small, is this too big? Oh my goodness, what is happening? Barbell, yep. So one thing that I do like to do is having like this bounding box around it. I didn't do it with this, but let's just move forward. <laughs> I just have an hour. Again, I'll fix that later, whatever. Uh, da, da, da. All right, home. Yeah, these bounding boxes are really big. Uh, let's see, can I just take this? I'm just gonna do that. I just uh, command G to group and command R to rename. Um, let's do icon. Okay, I'm just, I know I'm not doing this like exactly the right, but whatever. This again, this is just to show the visual differences. Uh, group one. Um, And then this would be a learn icon. I want all these to be about the same. So this is pretty tight. There's a lot of icons down here. Um, one thing I would do if I was actually working on this is figure out, do we need all these items in the navigation? All right, this should be good enough. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and group these things. Uh, learn. do that. So here is another opportunity for you to center things as well. So I'm hitting command G, command R. Again, I'm selecting, selecting the icon. I'm hitting center, hitting command G, hitting command R. Center, 
Command G, Command R. So then that way, I'm going to select all these. I'm going to deselect this navigation container and center it. And then I'm going to clean it up. Bam! Now everything is cleanly distributed. So as you can see, the, um, the tops here are kind of jagged. Uh, it's the text that's aligned. And it's up to you whether or not that's fine. But see how much cleaner this looks than this? Yeah, I'm a fan. So when you give a little bit of white space to breathe around this, these things, um, it just makes a big difference. Now another thing I would do is I would actually, um, I think these should be a little bolder, um, a heavier font, uh, weight because they are quite small. And this probably does not pass accessibility, but we will get to that when we get to it. Charge in the head. All right. All right, let's see here. So here, I kind of like, okay, so another thing about colors is, uh, I feel like, so Aubrey said that they selected the orange because they wanted something more fun. Um, but I don't know. I'm not a big fan of this orange. So <laughs> now the thing is, I am not a color expert. So I like to use tools that other designers have created. Uh, what I did here is I went to colorhunt.co and I looked up orange. And I'm going to look at different palettes to see if we can kind of play around with some things. Now, I really like this one. It's still an orange, but it's something like it kind of borders more on coral, uh, which makes it look, I don't know. Oh, some of these is like intangible, right? It's um, more about intuition, but let's try a couple things. Uh, just for the sake of, so what I like about this is like, there's also some pale uh, options here that we can play with and then a deep blue. Um, it's a complementary color. So let's take this. Let's see what it looks like when we... Oh, you know what? Let's worry about that later. So I'm going to... I have an idea. Let's... Let's see what it looks like when we take this pale color. And here, I'm just experimenting. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to take this font. Oh, what did I do? Okay. Take this, hold down option, drag it down. Oh. Let's put it in front. Oh, yeah. Um, just realized I did not name this. So I'm going to name this bottom nav. And then these two, I'm going to name um, selection. Selection background. Okay. So here, timed print. And here, I'm going to be mindful of the border. So here, I feel like we have all this space, and yet they're all, they're, the uh, padding is so tight. The more space you can give, the more clean and modern it's going to look. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. Time practice. With a subtitle, right? Um, Exercises. Based off of, let's do exercises with time limits. So see when I added that subtitle, shrink this padding. Um, we're gonna move it up a little bit more. So it's 29, 26, you know what? 
Uh, let's see. I'm going to give it a 32 pixel. Nope. 32, 26. Alright, so it's 32 here. 26. Now it's 32, 32. Okay, cool. You know what? And this is where it comes into handy, right? Now I'm going to select all of this. I'm going to group it, rename, uh, uh, practice type. And now I hold, I select the entire group. I hold down option. I'm going to do 16 pixel. Come on. Okay. Oh, hang on. All right. You know what? One, two. Now it's 16. Okay. And this. So I did that because I wanted to copy exactly the same placement so I don't have to nudge around those pixels anymore. Um, copy and pasting is going to be really important in terms of efficiency in your workflow. In an actual project, I would create that as a Figma component. All right. So here we've got time practice. Now we're going to say theme to practice. With theme categories. Uh, with I don't really like the copy on this. And the reason why it's like, it's so irrelevant. So you know what? I'm going to make a design decision and get rid of that subtitle because timed practice, timed limits, themed practice, themed categories. I don't think that subtitle is really necessary. So anyways, here we go. Uh, here. Ugh, okay. Let me make sure. 32 again, 32, 32, cool. Okay. Correct. So I like that. Um, so we have these. Do you see how much cleaner it already looks? Uh, let's see here. So now everything's one typeface, but when it comes to varying up the, um, the sizing, we want to think about hierarchy, okay? So here is obviously our, um, what do you call it? Our title. Let's see what it looks like at 28. What does this look like at 28? Hmm, not too bad. All right, so as far as spacing, so from here, I think maybe I want this to be closer. 10. Uh, let's see. I'm going to make that 16. And then I'm going to make this maybe 24. No, actually, I like the 34. Uh, let's do 36. Yeah. You see how, like, it makes it a little more interesting? I have um, a 16 space. I also have a 16 space here. But, like, this heading 
kind of belongs. It's more grouped, visual group with the title, whereas these are more grouped together, right? And so that's how you can um, kind of break up the rhythm of the page and um, make it a little more visually interesting. Otherwise, if you just have everything uh, placed together, uh, it just doesn't have a really good rhythm. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. Imagine if we have these squares, right? And let's say uh, each one is grouped like that. Now look at the difference if I repeat that, right? So let's do 16, but then we have a 24. Actually, the, uh, let's see, 24 might be too small, but 36, 36. See how it just like, there's kind of um, a different rhythm to it when you mix up the spacing. And now you can assume these two things are similar. These two things are similar. Like you can visually group things by um, similarities or by categories or things. All right, so time practice, theme practice. Uh, let's see. I kind of want to, I feel like something's missing here. I want like an arrow or something. Mm. So we can play around with that. Um, <laughs> so now that I've used that pale color, let's see what it looks like when I apply that, that color scheme we found. Hmm. Wait, <laughs> that's the pale color. I want this color. Yeah, look at that. That's nice. Yeah, that's cool. Ooh, and what if instead of these grays, we use that blue? And listen, I know I'm probably doing this such a, like, <laughs> inefficient way right now. But again, I'm just focused on the, um, on, you know, um, visuals right now. Ah, oh, that looks nice. Okay. Now again, I know. I know these are probably not accessible. <laughs> we'll touch on that in a little bit. Actually, you know what? Let's, uh... Oh, there's a really great plugin. Um, do, 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 contrast. That's really good. Hey. Let's install it. So, the Figma community has so many amazing plugins. I love seeing like what's already available cuz why reinvent the wheel? You know what I'm saying? So we're going to look at plugins, contrast, and here we can kind of test to see, yep, it fails all over. So let's try, let's see if we can make it a little darker. This is where I'm going to stray away from what we found, but try to do, try to see what we can do in the same like color palette family. So it is, oh, it's not changing. Okay. Let's see if that helps. Still, still fails. Okay. All right. All right, so that seems like it's pretty good. Uh, See what that looks like. All 
I'm probably driving some designers out there crazy with how I'm doing this, but it's okay. All right, so remember when I was saying you can't just uh, distinguish the active state by um, color alone? Let's play around with that. So another thing I like to do is create variations, okay? So uh, you know what? Yeah, okay, create variations. So let's do command R, uh, nav, um, design B. So let's see here. Maybe we, let's try to see what it looks like when we have background color. And let's try this. Now, this probably fails. Yep, fails. Let's make this a little lighter then. Uh, maybe like that. But you know what? Even that is just color, right? So another thing you can do is, so now I'm going to name this command R, uh, design C. Maybe we take this Bam. So now it's not just a color, it's an actual visual difference. Now it's like very clear which page, which tab I'm on, okay? So that's what I mean. So you could do this this way, you can also do. So this is something I'm doing that I don't see a lot of designers do, which is making variations. One of my absolute favorite designers, Aaron Draper, he said something that like was so obvious, but it really called out to me, which was you, <laughs> Uh, duplication is free. Making copies is free. We can do that. Um, we can even, let's say we combine elements of this. So, what if we did this? I'm going to command duplicate, uh, command D, I'm shrinking this one. See, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, all right. So those are my de navigation design options. What I like to do with that is I'll just put it somewhere else for right now. So I like doing these variations because then it really makes me, um, you know, mix it up. Like really explore every visual treatment you can. We can also do that with these. Um, boxes, right? So first of all, I, I did want to put something here. So let's, uh, I think I have an icon. Oh, I have an icon plugin. Let me take a look here. Icon scale. Let's try. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh my god, I have to sign up. You know what, I'm going to go ahead and look for, um, is it Font Awesome? I'm not the biggest fan of Font Awesome, but it's better than nothing. Do I have to sign in for this too? I hope not. So let's try to look for a carrot. Uh, look for an arrow. Okay, 
Ooh, these are cool. Mm. I just, oh, I like that. Now, <laughs> I'm just doing this for fun, but uh, make sure if it is for a commercial project that you're actually allowed to use the icons. Where are the arrow I just saw? I just want, um, <laughs> you know what? All right, I don't want to take too long, but let's just use this. Okay. No, it's PNG. Whatever, whatever. We're, we're just going to move forward. <laughs> we're spending way too much time on this. Oh my god, that's awful. Alright, whatever, guys. Just gonna go with it, okay? And basically, the reason why I'm putting out there is I felt like there was something missing. Um, maybe it wasn't the right uh, decision, but whatever. Alright, so the other thing I would say is the only differentiator between these is once time, once themed. I don't really have any other visual... Uh, differentiator for this so let's just duplicate one thing I could do is oh I'm going to name this redesign B I could make this a lighter color so let's choose this color So it's like differentiated. Um, however, I can also. And the reason why you want to differentiate it is like um, people will gloss over text a lot. So if there are two distinct things, you do want it to be different. All right, here's another way we can make it different. Um, I have an illustration pack. Um, let's see. I really like blush. Let's see what they got. Let's go with a clock. Uh, uh, let's go in at time. Nope, clock time. <laughs> clock time. Nope, come on. Wow, you know what? Uh, command all did not work there. Time. Mm, all right, these are not working for me. Let's look at another illustration kit. Can I search? I can't search. Man. Is there a clock? Interesting. time yeah let's try that hello all right I'm clicking it but nothing's happening oh <laughs> whoops okay I am an idiot hello Oh, I see. That was weird. Anyways, so I have this image. So this illustration kind of requires more of a square. Let's change that then. You know what? Delete. We're gonna go ahead and do this. So here again, I want to be mindful of my padding. Let's 
So because I do have another thing in here, uh, I might reduce the padding here. So let's make this 24. Mm -hmm. Then make this 24 here. Oh, I don't wanna. Twenty-four, twenty-four. Okay. This twenty-six. Now it's twenty-four. Okay. And these margins are not even. So let's try. I'm gonna select the image. Select the box. Middle. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's gonna drive me crazy. I'm getting rid of the decimals because with decimals you're gonna drive the developers crazy. Looks good. You know, I I still think there's not enough room here. But let's see. You know what? I could make this smaller. So what I did there is I wanted a little more breathing room between the label and the illustration. It's still at 24. Oh my gosh. But now there's decimals all over the place. All right. So I'm going to get rid of this decimal. Bam. What's happening? Oh. Middle. Now is it better? Okay, 74, 74. Alright, cool. I'm gonna name this illustration Times Illo. And this. Alright, so this. This is the size of the phone. I don't really want this below the, the scroll, okay? So this is where I'm gonna. Um, Maybe play around with the spacing. You know what? Let me make sure this illustration is in the right group. Time. Time illustration. I'm going to move this. Oh, no. <laughs> to the right. And then, all right, let's move these boxes up. Again, this got all jacked up. So I'm gonna try to duplicate this one. So I, Let's see, 16. 16, let's see, we can nudge this up a little bit, so it's at 12, mm -hmm. that's fine I think, it's at 20, it's at 13, I'm going to nudge this a little bit up, So what I'm doing there is I'm trying to nudge things so that it does not fall below the scroll. Alright, yeah, so this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna replace this um, illustration. Let's find another one. So when I'm looking for illustrations, I do want to make sure it matches the, um, the first one, okay? Probably should have actually uh, made sure I had a themed uh, illustration option. Um, hmm. Theme practice. I mean, these aren't very like artist uh, specific. Yeah. Oh, 
because you're so business related. Ah, crap. I might have, like, screwed myself. I'm just gonna go with something. Okay. Uh. <laughs> so these are starting to look different because see how there's like a very specific black line and it's like a single line weight these don't have lines so that's a whole nother illustration style let's go back up here um, you know what we're gonna go with this one I'm getting rid of this frame. Uh, I'm gonna command C. <coughs> this is a trick. So I just copied this. I'm taking this group and I'm gonna right click and paste to replace. Whoa, all right. Let's make it a little smaller, shall we? Uh, Hundred. let's see. What? What did I do? Oh. Okay, make sure only the group is selected so that you're not selecting the entire thumbnail. There. Just want to make sure that the padding is right. Name this a uh, themed yellow. Thirty. Okay. Oh my god. I it's really grating on me how sloppy my workflow is. that so compare this to over here <laughs> all right here's another thing we could do um, I'm gonna do one more design variation let's say we do want to use um, images right oh the other thing I would do is like oh you know what maybe would it look better if I had a bold? I think that does look better. So I didn't change the size, I changed the weight. And I think it differentiates itself a lot better from the subtitle if it's a different size and if it's a different weight. But I am, okay. It also uh, differentiates it from these um, labels here too. Uh, okay, so if I wanted, Let's unsplash. Let's for clock. Ooh. More like that. Okay. Yeah. And then for themes. So unsplash has like free, um, really high quality stock photos. Um, this is if you just had to use stock photos, you could not use illustration. You know what, painting. No wait, uh, sketching. Ooh. So I kind of want something that kind of matches the tone of this. Um, That is really oh, intense. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, I like that. Mm, it's not very bright, but this is so colorful. Let's see. Whoa. 
Oh, okay, so this has color. Let's see what that looks like. What the hell? What happened here? Did I not click? Oh, I need to click on the square. And splash. Good. Um, sketching. I have to go all over again. Oh, this kind of matches the tone and um, vibrancy. Let's try that. Yeah. So here's the other problem with um, photos is that you get this problem where you're going to have to um, make it um, legible uh, against photos. So... Let's see what we can do here. All right, I'm gonna do, wait, B, C, I, we're gonna call this D. So we can make this white. And, hmm, what else can we do? Drop shadow. So with drop shadows, I like to make it kind of colorful. So I seldom ever do like a straight up black. I'll do like a little bit of color. Let's see what that looks like. Um, I like to also blur the heck out of it. Ugh, that looks so ugly. Let's see, 50. It's okay, I guess. Change the Y axis of it. I want it a little closer to the text. don't hate it, but I don't like it. But let's see what it looks like. Copy, copy properties, paste properties. That should have the shadow, does it not? Yeah, it does. Eh, it's all right. Uh, let's try one more variation. To design E. So instead, this time, this time I want to let's see. I'm actually gonna do that. I'm gonna make these cards. So I want. the box. Okay, but R, I'm just going to go ahead and make one here. I'm going to make it, um, hmm. you know what, let's, uh, let's make it white. Whatever. Up, 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 up. Zero, zero, what is this? Ten. 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 I'm gonna add a stroke. Let's do like a super, super, super light gray. There, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm gonna make these. I want to keep the 10 point, 10 pixel radius up here, but not down here. So this goes um, left top corner, right top corner, right bottom corner, uh, left bottom corner. So I'm gonna do zero, zero, bam. All right, now we're gonna move this down here. It's probably on top. Uh, okay, where is this? Rectangle. Um, card, title, background. And I'm going to move this down here. No, wait. That's on the bad, bottom navigation. See, I mixed myself up because I did not group things. Bam. All right. So this. Is it really? 28? Okay. I'm going to get rid of that drop shadow. And now, ooh, you know what? I'm going to make this 20. This just seems so big for that little area. Time practice. O M G. What is happening? Oh, I'm gonna move that to the group. Okay. Stat. Oh. So here I gotta be mindful of the padding. Um, all right. I'm gonna select the background and the text. I'm going to. Align. Let's see what that does. Yeah, so. Oh, it's like a little uneven because this is a little big. So I'm going to make this 63 so that once I change that, now it's 19 up here and 20. Oh. I'm going to select the background again, align it to the middle. Now it should be s even, 20 and 20, bam baby. Uh, and then here I can nudge it one pixel. So now we are even 20, 20, 20, bam. Goodness, all right, so I could do that. I don't wanna do all that work again, so I'm gonna. <laughs> So, can I just move? No. Um, I take this, command copy, paste, <sighs> 10. Nope. I see some of you designers going, What are you doing? The stroke is so uh, faint. Okay, it's fine enough, I guess. All right, sixteen. 36, yeah, I think it's fine, whatever. So anyways, so as you can see, I have one, two, three, four, five design variations now, and I have one, two, three, four, five design variations on the navigation. Uh, let's see the difference between the original. Blah! Look at that. Bam, baby. 
see how it's more clean. Um, and that's just through picking a good um, photo, being mindful of variation in typography, spacing. And let's see, this kind of looks a little boring to be honest. Um, let's see what we can do. Maybe we can even have like a background color. Um, color. Let's try. Let's try something. Let's just try it. Let's see what it looks like. Wait, what? What's happening? Isn't this practice design? Screen? this light. Oh, that is bothering me. Stroke. Oh, F that. Okay, much better. Um, anyways, you could play around with it. Of course, again, be mindful of spacing. We do have a little bit of room here. But anyways, design is all about just playing around and seeing what works. I do not like that. Uh, it's just too bold. Let's see here. Hmm. Anyways, I don't know. Uh, so here, if I was like, okay, this seems okay, but kind of seems plain. I would look back at uh, my inspiration and kind of get ideas. Uh, so, you know, um, hmm. it sometimes it doesn't really take a lot. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the photo ones anyway. So always lean towards and refine the ones that you actually really enjoy. Um, I really like this one. So, and I feel like because these are so visually interesting, I don't really need to do much with up here. But I could. So here. I could also. Um, what was I gonna do? I totally forgot. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like when these are both white and have a stroke of like that coral color. Uh, let's see. Let's see what it looks like at four, three. Hmm. doesn't really match the art. Let's try blue. Ooh, that's kind of cool. We can also get rid of these because those were kind of thin anyways. And maybe we can center it and try to center Checks. It looks a little big, doesn't it? Let's see. 20. Let's see what it looks like at 20. I don't know why that just looks cleaner. And also, you can also make these. 
um, like different colors. Anyways, yeah, there's other things you can do to um, change it up. So this would be what? Redesign F. Do you see how many like variations I came up with? So this is helpful because then once you get to as many variations as possible, you just narrow down and pick one that you really like, one or two, just so you can give people like a, a chance to um, uh, give in their, what am I trying to say? Hello, Havana. Um, you know, the stakeholders might want to weigh in on different design options. But yeah, anyways, hopefully this was helpful. I am so sorry to the designers who are like, Havana, what the heck is, there's a much more efficient way to do this. This is not a Figma tutorial. This was just to show how um, applying very basic design principles can really clean up a lot of your designs and make it look less amateur. Anyways, let me know if this helped. And for people who want to nitpick how I did this, feel free to comment. Um, I'm always trying to learn. So I would actually like a lot of constructive criticism and a lot of um, uh, advice. So anyways, enjoy. Thanks for witnessing. I guess I only had time for one. <laughs> but I did, I did uh, play around with the navigation. So anyways, until next time.